Garrett Wilson. Wow! What a catch! Touchdown, Jets! That kid's amazing. There is no way he amazing. caught that. Amazing. And his first touchdown catch from Zach Wilson. That's all 17. He's as good a young receiver as I've ever seen. This ball was up the field. So he didn't throw it on the back shoulder. And for him to be able to get his right hand out there and then concentrate and reel it in is incredible. That's as good as it gets. Whistles for a delay of game. Delay of game, number nine, offense, five-yard penalty, retry from the 20-yard line. So from a 33-yard try to tie it to a 38-yard try, I mean, that, that that is just breathtaking. This guy, last year watching him, and I'm talking about early, his first game and second game, he had a release in the red zone. As you can put on Jerry Rice film and you'd have a hard time coming up with the kind of release that this kid has. But he is a superstar in the making. Another one of those Ohio State wide receiver, wide receivers so well coached. Extra point sneaks in. Welcome back to ESPN NFL kickoff presented by YouTube TV. Tie game under five to go. The throw by Zach Wilson, the catch by Garrett Wilson it was all world. <laughs> That was something. And Josh Allen, who has had a rough second half, will start at the 25 as we take a look at our game recap brought to you by Smirnoff. Tonight, Jordan Whitehead is number two in catches for the Jets. But he plays defense. Three picks of Josh Allen. And the last one set up the game tying touchdown. Allen lost the snap. Ball comes out. And it's recovered by the Jets. The call is fumble. Jets ball with a replay to follow and now a fight. Michael Clemens knocked it out. And these guys are still going at it. John Franklin Myers. Right now, this is the fourth turnover of the game for the Bills. Moving on the field, there's a fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down Jets. Took his eyes off the snap. Yeah, and Clemens, here he comes, and he just blows it up. Oh, that's out. Yeah, that was an easy one. And, boy, this crowd has worked up into a frenzy ever since Garrett Wilson just totally took his eyes off the ball. And him trying to then make something happen, never quite even had it secured, and Clemens puts it on him. Quinn and Williams with the recovery. And just like that, the offense is back out there for the Jets. And this has been a nightmare second half. As bad for Josh Allen as it can be. Yeah, and as good as this defense was last year, we've talked about it. Where they were not good is creating takeaways. And it's the takeaways tonight that have allowed them to get back in this game and tie it up. With a chance now to take the lead. Buffalo with four second half possessions, three turnovers and a punt. They're trying to offense is trying to calm the they're trying to quiet quiet the crowd down. You got eleven guys in the huddle trying to win this crowd. This crowd came here tonight wanting to make some noise, and they didn't have a lot to make noise about until just recently. After the fumble and the recovery from the 27 in a tie game. They hand a haul. Call to the 21. As the crowd shouts, Brees. 
You know, Brees Hall, he's probably gotten a, a little more work than what we anticipated coming in. Thought they were going to ease him into the night. Instead, he took the first play from skim, scrimmage, 26 yards. Had over 100 yards rushing on two carries. But they've split the carries up between he and Dalvin Cook tonight. Nine carries for Hall, 124 yards. One-on-one -on -one up top. They go back to Hall. Breaking tackles. He's going to be, it appears, just short of first down yardage. Leonard Floyd couldn't bring him down. Ed Oliver had to. I will tell you, Joe, if they've got one-on-one -on -one outside, Christian Benford that time was in coverage. And he's a second-year player. He had five starts as a rookie. And it was a competition with two guys trying to see who was going to play opposite Tredavious White if they get the one-on-one -on -one look down here after what we've already seen and what we know of Garrett Wilson I, I just cannot fathom not giving him an opportunity tight formation on third down and one Cook very close with the official running in doesn't look like he picked it up according to that yellow line. Bills are saying fourth down. Let's see when they set it down. I mean, it is right there. And we're going to have a measurement. Shaq Lawson made that stop. Big number 90, 6'3", 265. Yeah, I'm with you, Joe. I didn't. Uh, you got Sala leaning in there, seeing if he can get a little extra out of it. Where's the spot? But it, it did not look to me like he got it. Just short. It's fourth down. You'd the like decision to, for Sala. Yeah, there's a decision. You'd like to think you can quarterback sneak this for that. So you pass on the field goal, offense stays out there. You've got a defense that's humming right now with the Jets, but they're going to try to pick it up. Yeah, I, I like this call. I, I do. I understand that you get a chance to take the lead, but if you do pick this up, you get you also get a chance to take a little more time off this clock. The analytics department says go for it. Wilson gets it. And the clock continues to run with just over two and a half left. They needed just a couple of inches. He got it easily. To the delight of Robert Sala, the third-year head coach. Play clock is at seven. Just get it away, and they just get it on the handoff to Cook, who's brought down by Ed Oliver. Big play in the backfield and a loss of three, and we're at the two-minute warning. Each side with all three timeouts, second and long, when we come back. What a night. The end of week one, 13-13 game. Hey, I'm Scott Van Pelt getting set for post-game coverage here at MetLife. We'll get Robert Sala's update on what we know about Aaron Rodgers' injury. But, fellas, this has taken clearly a big turn because of that Jets defense now with a chance to win it. We'll talk to a member of the winning team, whoever that might be. Joe, Troy, back to you. What a night. Yeah, what a night. We've seen a little bit of everything. And right now we're seeing Zach Wilson, who's called on after four snaps taken by Aaron Rodgers tonight to take back over the Jets. Tie game, two minutes left, second and 13. Cook in the backfield. Still one-on-one -on -one with Garrett Wilson. Three tight ends in the game for the Jets. And that's Cook, third down and long coming up. Well, that becomes the question, and it's being answered. So timeout, Buffalo, and you ask the question as to whether or not they're going to play conservative and try to run the clock and 
force them to burn their timeouts. If they do and they make a stop here, then they're going to get the ball back with, I don't know, roughly a minute and a half, minute and 40 with one timeout left. Or do you take a shot? And that, if you're going to take a shot, I think that was the chance. You get you get the one-on-one on Garrett Wilson, and I just have a hard time believing that that Rodgers wouldn't be taking advantage of some of this. Maybe they'd play it differently if he was the quarterback. Yeah, well, we know that Zach Wilson is. They've kept everything around the line of scrimmage. He did throw the touchdown pass. Garrett Wilson did everything on the back end of that play, and here we are. So third down and long as the Jets come to the line. Tie game. Two timeouts left for Buffalo. Third down and 12. As conservative as it can be, the carry by Michael Carter, their third down back, a gain of six. Timeout by Buffalo. They'll have one left. It's fourth down. So they get the fumble from Josh Allen and right now trying to turn that into three points and the lead. Give you a game recap. It took a terrible turn for the Jets early. His fourth snap. Third official offensive play went down. They're calling it a left ankle injury right now. Went in to get looked at with the boot. Last time the Jets had it, this all-world catch by Garrett Wilson. Bills got it back in a tie game and then turned it over. And now here we are with the Jets attempting a 30-yarder to take the lead. Zerline gets it. And the first lead of the night for the Jets at 16-13 happens with a minute 48 remaining. And now it's Josh Allen against the Jets' defense. Well, the Jets trailed by 10 at the half, 13-3. to They've scored 13 straight points. And 13 of their 16 points tonight have come off turnovers. Four turnovers tonight by the Bills, but opportunity for Josh Allen and this Bills offense to erase a brutal second half with a game-winning drive. We look ahead to next week. We'll have two Monday Night Football games side-by-side side. on ESPN. The Saints head to Charlotte to take on the Panthers at 7 p.m. Chris Fowler, Dan Orlowski, Lewis Riddick, and Laura Rutledge working that one. We'll be on ABC for the Browns and the Steelers at 8. Don't miss two Monday Night Football games next week on ESPN and ABC. First down, steps through. And takes a big hit. Huff was in on that with middle linebacker Mosley in a gain of seven. Wow. I mean, a nice gain. Nice job by Josh Allen, but get to the ground. Second down and three. Coming off the edge. Blitz. Allen completes to Gabe Davis. First down, Buffalo with a minute 14 in counting and one timeout. During the commercial break, Stefan Diggs came up to Josh Allen, encouraging him, pumping him up. Allen fires and he finds Stefan Diggs for the first down on the Jet side of midfield. Well, to get to Tyler Bass's career long they just need to get to the 40 yard line so we're talking seven yards but they're thinking a lot more than that there's that moment between Diggs and Allen far cry from where they were in Buffalo at the end of that loss to Cincinnati in the playoffs and there he is again but a flag on the play and it's going to be against Diggs for pushing off on Sauce Gardner Fast interference, number 14. Offense, 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. That erases an eight-yard completion. Offensive pass interference as Diggs got the arms extended. Yeah, it's a good it's a good call. You see right there with the hands extended. 
There's the push right there as they make the back shoulder throw. So that backs him up a little bit. Can they block him and give Josh Allen some time? Timeout Jets. They're first. 35 seconds left. That eight-yard pickup that was eliminated on the push-off by Stefan Diggs would have been at the outside edge of field goal range for Tyler Bass, who, as Troy said, his career long is 58 yards, which means getting it to the 40-yard line of the Jets. Second half, it just can't get much worse for the Bills. Interception, punt, interception, fumble. In their four possessions, tying his career high as Allen with four turnovers. Yeah, some not so good decisions by Josh Allen, but some real resiliency by this New York Jets defense. With the timeout, the Jets get Quinn and Williams, big 95, back on the field. Pressure off the edge from Adams. Pass is complete. Diggs inside the 45. And McDermott will call his team's final timeout from the sideline. A completion of 15 yards. Well, they yards. brought some pressure on this drive. The Jets had. We talked about how they're primarily a four-man rush, but they come after him. D.J. Reed, he's an off technique and a good route at the top. You see how it looked like he was going to accelerate. Gets D.J. Reed turned around thinking he's going to go deep. And it created the separation then for Diggs to be able to make the catch. One of the best route runners in all of football, Stephon Diggs. In case you're wondering, it would be a 60-yard field goal from here. Career long 58 for Bass. Second and five, 29 seconds and no timeouts. Diggs on Reed at the bottom, and that's where Allen goes. The clock will run as Stefan Diggs takes it to the 32. And stops the clock with 16 seconds remaining. Well, we saw him when he had the push off against Sauce Gardner. They don't flip corners, as I mentioned earlier in this game. So you put him to the left side, and you know you've got DJ Reed then matched up. DJ Reed's a good corner. But on two routes now, the the one on the on the deeper curl, which was an outstanding route, now you run the quick slant, give him a place to go with the football. Two really nice jobs on route running by Stephon Diggs, helping his quarterback with a place to go with it. Play clock at nine, second and ten. Well, they got to be careful here if they keep this in play. Allen going for the end zone, incomplete. Now 10 seconds left. Gabe Davis the target with Reed in coverage again. Looking like it's going to come down to Tyler Bass. If you're short of first down yardage, the Bills cannot spike it. Well, that's right. And so you're thinking sideline or end zone is what they've got to do with the ball. It's third and ten. And timeout taken by the Jets. Ten seconds left. Tyler Bass during pregame was hitting from 60. That's like Striping it down the middle on the driving range. Doesn't count. <laughs> That's right. It would be a 50-yard try from here if they don't get any more yardage.
Sideline incomplete. And the Bills can't play around with this anymore. Fourth down and ten. Six seconds left. And Sean McDermott will call on Tyler Bass to try and tie it and send this game into overtime here on September 11th at the end of week one. Well, Josh Allen was not going he was not going to take any chances. He felt the pressure and did the right thing and just got it out. Jets do have a timeout. They don't take it. Bass hits the upright. It's good. Banks it in off the left upright to tie this game at 16 with two seconds left from 50 yards away. We show that shot of Stephon Diggs on the sidelines. I'm not sure he was breathing. Plenty of leg. Off that flag at the top and then through. And it appears we will play on. Had it all the way. Three for three on the night. Same for Greg Zerline. <laughs> and we're tied at 16. You hear that thud, and you're most of the time you're not expecting that it's going to go through. Yeah, heartbreak. Good hold by Sam Martin, the punter. Snap was high, got it down, and then Bass thumped it. No squib out of the back of the. End zone, and we are one play away from overtime. Yeah, and you got to give Josh Allen credit. Gets the ball. It's been a tough second half. He's not seeing the field particularly well, and it's easy then to, to let that carry over in a moment like that. But he rallied, and it was him and Diggs. The two guys that as long as they stay healthy, they give Buffalo an opportunity each and every week. Final snap of regulation. And those folks packed in here at MetLife gets to see some more. We'll show the coin toss and then take a break. The overtime rules, which... John Perry was going over in his drive from Ohio here to the Northeast. One period, 10 minutes. It can end in a tie, kids. Each team has an opportunity to possess. Unless that opening possession ends up in a touchdown. All reviews initiated by a replay official. Each team gets two timeouts. Let's go back to the game-tying kick. Off the right foot of Tyler Bass. Bank shot. Here's the coin Gentlemen, toss. Gentlemen, we are about to begin an overtime period of up to 10 minutes. It will be fourth quarter timing. And it is a sudden death unless the first possession ends in a field goal, at which time the opponent will have an opportunity to possess. Each team gets two timeouts, and all the reviews are done by the replay official. Again, the flag is heads. The Twin Towers are tails. Buffalo gets to call the toss. He calls heads. heads. It is heads. Buffalo gets the ball first. Buffalo gets the ball at this end of the field. Good luck, gentlemen. So Josh Allen will go right back to work. Helmet on, ready to go. Ready to try to salvage this night. Tied at 16. Off to overtime we go. Bill's ball. Well, let's play on. Monday Night Football tied at 16. On a 
field where last night the Dallas Cowboys took apart the Giants 40 to nothing. Pretty stunning final score. Week one for each team, really. Who's going to take this one? Zerline will hit it into the end zone, and the first possession starts at the 25. See if Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis can build on whatever momentum they got at the end of regulation. Well, you see uh, Allen's career record in overtime. A little different when you get into overtime as opposed to that last drive. I know there's a lot of people at home probably thinking, well, why wouldn't you come out and do the same things? Yeah, you can, but... The Jets are going to play this a little bit differently than they did on that last possession. That's a false start on Spencer Brown. False start, number 79, offense. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Josh Allen on that game-tying drive with the field goal that ended it. Had four completions, three of them went to Stephon Diggs. and throws and it's incomplete with Knox the target well he has an opportunity it's a it's a good idea they go receivers to the left and they've got Knox then working this angle with the back to that side and he's worried about Sauce Gardner who was coming off of that but if you work that two receiver route combination to that side if you don't like what you've got there with Sauce Gardner come under the back and you pick up a, a, a pretty nice gain underneath. Both Knox and Kincaid to the right side of the formation. They hand to Cook. And he was met at the line of scrimmage by Quinn and Williams. Tireless on the inside for the Jets and coordinator Jeff Ulbrich. Yeah, he's just an absolute force inside. This defensive front has has really been good. They've been as good as advertised coming in. Third down and 12. Allen slides, pass incomplete. Reed in coverage, digs the target. Fourth down. Let's show some of the quickness of D.J. Reed. This time, unlike the last drive, he's not able to get D.J. Reed turned. You see how he's able to then put his foot in the ground and drive back on the football. Not easy to do. Locked up out there one-on-one -on -one against a guy like Stephon Diggs. Sam Martin corrals the snap. It's a short punt. Gibson on the return. Near side. I don't see any flags. Gibson inside the 30. Hits the Jets. And he's going to go. Jets win it. Touchdown, rookie Xavier Gibson. Game over. Five yards after a 42-yard punt by Sam Martin and the young man Xavier Gibson from Stephen F. Austin, undrafted, who forced his way onto this team, had three punt returns for touchdowns in college, has just ended this night. We made some moves with Chaz Surratt out in front of him delivering the key block. Martin couldn't bring him down, and Gibson sets off the celebration.
It's a great effort by Xavier Gibson in order to get out on the edge and then make something happen when initially it didn't look like there was a whole lot there. And then he makes a few people miss, which is what you got to do if you're going to have a big return like that. But what a great team victory all the way across for the New York Jets. Chaz Surratt delivering this block on Quentin Morris, and that was the big one. John Perry. Yeah, it is big, but you got to put an asterisk on it because there's a tripping call that was not made. A trip, a leg whip, right near the 23-yard line, number 55, which would have brought the touchdown back. We'll take another look. And Robert Sala, on a night when he lost his 39-year-old quarterback, just watched his special teams win the game. And here's Surratt, 55, right there. Yep. Not called on the field, and it sprung Gibson really with the last important block, albeit with that leg whip. And it gets Xavier Gibson into the end zone with a tremendous effort on the punt return to win it. Let's send it down to Lisa Salters. Thank you, Joe. Xavier. Take me through that game-winning punt return. What, were, what was going through your mind when the ball was up in the air? I seen the ball in there, and I seen I had a shot. I had Artie and Bryce Hall on the ends. I trust them guys to my core, and I just seen the opportunity, and I just took it. What happened to this team emotionally when Aaron Rodgers went down? The energy had kind of got low. But once we came in here and the and, uh, locker room, he didn't show no signs of disappointment, you know. He encouraged me. He just gave me a look. I looked him in his eyes, gave him a look. Then in my mind, I was thinking, like, let's win this game for A-Rod. You know, he worked hard. He worked hard all week. We, we all watch Chard Knox. We've seen your journey, you making this team. Just what does this moment mean to you? A lot. No, I didn't fail these guys. You know, I spoke to them about that in the locker room, in the meeting room. And I said, I'm going to go hard just for them, not for me. So it was personal. Congratulations. Thank you. When he found out he made the team, he called his mom. She was getting an oil change. And it was the best phone call that she's ever received for Xavier. Undrafted, Stephen F. Austin forced his way onto the team with a great camp. Good on special teams. And this is just some ending here tonight.